Morning, morning. Good morning, dear pastor. What a privilege to sit next to you this, oh this fine Monday and morning. And it starts. <laughs> it is a what am I? What, uh, <laughs> and it starts. Does Here he, we are, off to the he race. Wasn't there complaining, pastor Mike, about having to do this. <laughs> he was not. I was not. He was not. We. We're all the we're I th we're all the way back now, we because you you started at the end of the service yesterday you started digging into me and I fired <laughs> back at you and like, all right sabbatical's really over now we're um, we're back in it. Uh, what was I going to say? That song yesterday was really great. Man, yeah, that that's a Travis Cottrell arrangement. Was, is it really? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Gosh, it really was good. Cool. It was great. The song that we've never sung before, the Christmas. A What's Christmas the one that Day? you opened up? Yeah, with? Christmas Day. Boy, that yeah. was great. That was a beautiful song. Yeah, we've got uh, music was really good. Well, thanks for your really, encouragement. Really good. Thanks for your encouragement on that. It's always a tough choice, like thinking between the, you know, do you only do like the old traditional Christmas carols or like how many of the newer Christmas uh, yeah, songs? No, you, you do, do a good blend. To, you, to, you do you do that well. You do that well. well. We'll keep the hits coming. I'll try to. I'm going to try to reprise the. The, what what you said because you're preaching on the second coming this coming. Uh, that's week. all that he's talking about here, and it's really funny how he goes into this. And I've got to spend a little bit of time. I've uh, this week kind of digging into some background in order to look at how many times does Paul lapse back over into the coming of Christ. It's a lot. It's an awful lot. It really is. Well, and I like what you were doing yesterday. Um, one of the notes that I took as you were going through it was like how you're using these different Romans passages to give us a flavor, like a taste of all the all the different things that Paul's saying. Yeah, Romans. you went yeah. back to seven. You talked about a. Yeah, it's well, you know, he kind of says here that you know this is how you fulfill the law, and he says it twice. He kind of encases that little pericope right there with that concept. But Paul has said back in chapter 7, I can't keep the law. Right. But now here he comes and he says, this is how you fulfill it. Well, and that's one of the most interesting, because actually like in my, in my D group, we've been studying Romans. And when you get into um, what he says, talking about the law, uh, well, and I thought you, you, you tackled it head on yesterday. It's, it's, it's difficult. It can be difficult to understand because you it read, is. if you only, if, if you don't read the whole argument, you're like, well, what is the law even for? The law sounds like a bad thing. But it's not. And right. there, here, the, here's a illustrate. Are we on? Are we on? Yeah, we actually we're on. are. Which, and people are calling you. That, I mean, that's, that's the way we know we're really yeah. on when people, the phone calls here's, start rolling. Here's the, here's the illustration. Everybody thinks that the law and love are opposites. Right, but right. they're not. They're it's really very together. close together, yeah. and it's kind of like I was going to use, and I didn't use it neither, either uh, time that I oh, preached well, yesterday. That's why we're here. So, uh, and, and and it's kind of a country boy illustration. I guess I'm thinking about it because this time of year, you'd always begin to go hunting. You yeah. know, bird hunting. Do you hunt deer anymore? Hunting. Every once in a blue moon, yeah. I love to bird hunt. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to go deer hunting because I sit up there and I read the whole time, and I miss. <laughs> I got a little light, and I'm reading. I'm reading something, and I hear something. I look up, and all I see is that tail just yeah, going on. Yeah, it's already right. gone. Yeah. But um, the here, here's the thing. My dad gave me my first gun, shotgun, when I was ten years old. Yeah. And uh, he, you know, would explain it and talk about it and show me and all of this. There's an explosion, and there's an and there's a barrel, and the two work together. Sure. Yeah. The explosion is when the bullet goes off. Right. That's love. Oh, okay. And the barrel is the law. Keeps it going in the right direction. It keeps it going toward the... Toward the target. Toward the target. If you have an explosion without the barrel, it's going to be awful. Right. You know, if you have a barrel without the explosion, it's just totally useless. Yeah, you don't have anything. But when you put the two together, so the law comes and says, this is what you've done that is wrong, or this is what you do not do. This, this is what you don't want to do. And it tells me that, and it's good that it tells me that because without the law, I wouldn't know. Mm. But at the same time, here's, here's, so that's the law, that's the barrel that keeps me headed. Love comes and enables me to explode that love 
you yeah, know, share your love with the world. Ex ex explode that love. The barrel keeps it straight. You've um, so, and that's what I think Paul was doing in verse nine when he starts listing the Ten Commandments. Well, there. and you talked about how the, the the love of Christ is very different from the way that the world defines love, and you used mm -hmm. the summer of love in San Francisco, nineteen sixty seven, mm -hmm. as an illustration of that. So you said you were ten years old. Is that mm -hmm. right? You were born fifty mm -hmm. seven. So, you, so do you remember watching the news reports about all I that do, going on? I do, because my dad would watch, like I said, Huntley Brinkley every single <laughs> night. Well, what network was that on? I, I don't think I've heard that name before, Huntley Have you Brinkley. not? I don't think yeah, I have. Yeah, Chet Huntley and... Um, These which, were his famous was, newscasters yeah. at the time. Yeah, Huntley Joanna, Brinkley. get those numbers on our desk, uh, Huntley Brinkley. Yeah. I'm, it's got to be one of the big three, ABC, Yeah, it ABC, was. CBS, it, well, that's those. all that was on. Yeah, yeah. those were, we those did, were we the didn't have. CNN Paul or Fox. And David Brinkley. David Brinkley. David Brinkley. David Brinkley is an interesting guy. I, I, I'm trying to remember. It seems like I read a biography on him years and years ago. Anyway, uh, these guys gave the night, and Dad always watched that. Yeah. And he, you know, so I would see clips of all these flower children, you know, yeah, flower child. Right. Put the flowers all in these, my hair. Yeah, hippies and all like that. I. That's just, I just remember that. And I, I see it in my head, it's in yeah. black and white. You know, <laughs> right. it's funny, they had no color to them. Um, yeah, the black and white flowers. Just, you know, yeah. You mentioned like watching the TV back then and how the TV was this big. This and big the screen, and the screen, screen was, was like this, yeah. That is just so funny, thinking about how the TV was such, it was like a piece of furniture. You know, sometimes <laughs> it was even had like the. It was. Um, hey, the same thing with stereo systems. Right, they used to right. be these huge, we had, mom and dad had this huge stereo, you know, record player in uh, radio, AM and FM radio, but it was in this great big long, I mean, it became a part of the furniture. It was. It's so interesting how that culture has changed. Now people, it's like technology, they want it to be minimal. A lot of times they want it to be hidden, you know, yeah. hide, hide yeah. the wires, keep things away. Um, you know, the TV is just like a black slab You know, it's somewhere. like that now. You just hang it up on the wall. I saw a great tweet or something this week, and it, and it was talking about, like, hey, Costco, we, we all already have a TV. Would you mind putting those groceries on sale? Yeah, for really? Friday, for that's Friday. exactly right. Oh, uh, that's, that's... The uh, that's price of those things, how they have come down, is unreal. Oh, we walked TV through the show. other night, and there was an 85-inch in there. And I just said, Dave, let's just look at it for a second. Yeah. She said, well, it won't fit. And she was right. It's yeah. just way too big. Um, it is amazing. But though. it's They're amazing. You can get an 85-inch television for not much. Yeah, sometimes less than $1,000. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it really is unbelievable um, how that's changed. You know, at, um, Apple's always releasing new computers and that sort of thing. And on the one side, you'll have the people over here be like, can't believe how expensive it is. And on the other side, they'll be like, well, check out this screenshot from their website in 96 because the prices are even higher Yeah, yeah. Uh, back then. So, yeah, it's, the technology's become so much more accessible. It's really amazing. And good, uh, yeah. although it doesn't last that long. You know, I've got a computer that I got in, was it, is it 20 or 22 or yeah. something? Yeah. I just got to... Not 22. Right? It must have been 20 or 21 yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, something like that. And I'm thinking, I, I need to give this to one of the grandkids and just get another one. Yeah, it's starting to run slow on yeah, you, that yeah. sort of thing. I know that you're one of the fastest two-fingered typers in the I world. Can, I can breeze it really fast. Um, so you had the you had the summer of love in '67, and then when was Woodstock in '69? '69, yeah, uh -huh. that was the summer of '69, all that sort of thing. And so yeah. that was I, that was the year I was saved. Was in '69. Um, was there? I, this doesn't have anything to do with the sermon, but what was there a connection between that summer of love and then what happened? Because I think so. Was in, it was an East Coast thing. Oh right? yeah, it was over in what New Pennsylvania oh, or New York? I think it yeah, was, New York, York uh, Woodstock New York. Uh, up in New York. Yeah, I think it was kind of a precursor. I mean, it was not like, hey, we're going to plan this in '67, then we'll come back and do this in '69. I think it just kind of led up yeah. to it. it just kind of, hey, we want to do something like this again. But that kind of was a I think a precursor to Woodstock. You know, this is, I know this highlights the difference in how we're, you and me are in different generations, but I remember coming, like one of the first news reports that I remember watching with my parents was about Woodstock 94, mm -hmm. when they tried to redo, the, I was nine years mm -hmm. old, and they were trying to redo the thing, and my folks were like, I can't believe they're doing this again. Yeah. 
Um, and sure enough, you know, it was like, it was a disaster. So many, like there were people that died, so many people dehydrated, mm -hmm. they didn't, they weren't set up right. Yeah, I remember that too. Um, you know, those, those events were set out in, with an intention, we will change the world with right, this. Right, right. Somehow through music. Fat and... chance, <laughs> you know. And it was kind of like, I, I went back, I don't know what it was, a month ago, and I don't know why I was even looking at this, but I went back and I looked at um, the great big video that they did with all the artists, you know, Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson and, you know, Bruce Springsteen, and they had, and Dinah Ross, and, you know, all of these that people. The we are the world thing? We are the world yeah. thing. Well, we're going to sing this, and it's going to change the world. We are the world. You know, Everybody. it has absolutely, man keeps thinking that if he can do something really cute, he can change <laughs> everything. And, and But he will not go back to what God has said. He will not do that. He won't go back to the Word of God, follow God's prescription, and see the world change, see life changed, but he will come up with every cute little event he can come up with. You describe that as like not, not having a foundation to the love. None, yeah. Yeah, the love that, that Paul's talking about here in, in 13, and he talks about it in 12 as well, you know, brotherly affection, repaying mm -hmm. no one evil for evil, is, is, uh, that is just so countercultural. You could do a whole series on that, I guess, if you wanted to. Yeah. You know, the words that the Bible uses for love, God's standard of love versus what the world wants to define as, yeah. as love. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, it was all of that, and, and you know, Hollywood and everybody pushes that idea yeah. that the expression of love is sex. It is always sex. It's always until it Tina Turner gets up and sings, well, what's, what's love got to do with it? <laughs> you, know? it you don't have to have love for that. You, know? you don't even need love for that. And she was more right than any, maybe all the rest of them, she's more right than that. You don't have to. And I see that in some of what Paul is saying here, and I may bring some of that out Sunday. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. That, she, that, that um, um, the physical relationship is not love. So she's saying, what's love got to do with it? Well, that's where the Bible is so helpful. And I can't remember who I was talking with about this, um, but the, the different words that the Bible uses for love. Greek is a little bit more descriptive yeah. in that way than English is. We have the word love in the Bible. Obviously, you have agape, which that's yeah. probably what Paul's it is. Here. It is the word. That and he's in using. twelve, he has philos, you know, the brotherly right. uh, affection. Obviously, of eros, that's the physical, yeah. you know, that's the sexual expression. Isn't there another one? Is oh, dode there, there one? Ah, uh, dode. I can't remember. No, Should have looked that one up. Joanna, anyway, get there, are on there, are <laughs> there, there are a there are a but. Where were you when I was in school studying <laughs> Greek? Um, there, there are a number of. Yes. A lot more words that describe aspects of love in Greek. Yes. Uh, there's a bunch of them. I don't know how many, 10, 15, well, something, I'm, that describe different, even, you know, breakdowns of, of, of love. But those are the major three that the New Testament deals with. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So that, I guess, I, well, and the, the point that you were making yesterday, and I guess that we've stumbled onto today, is that there, it, a, a close look at the Bible um, is, is what's going to help us make a distinction between what the world yeah, says is love yeah, sure. um, and, and what we keep thinking is love. So um, I'm really interested in, I know we're kind of going out, out, of, uh, out of order. You already talked about how transformed love um, pushes love forward um, like an Oh, I think I wrote that down wrong. How our debt is debt is paid. Take us back. Well, to a little well, bit it's of that like first point. We, it extends that this the the whole concept of transformed a, a transformed person by God's grace is that they're always extending love. They're always pushing it out there. They're always living in the midst of it. They're dealing with it. They're they're Paul's going to talk down here about taking off. Um, he's going to say. Um, let us behave properly on the day. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let mm -hmm. take off the lay aside the yeah, deeds of no the deeds the of the flesh. darkness and put on the armor of light. I dress. I dress this morning because I'm going to be this way all day. Um, I've got oh, stuff like all that. the way up until you know I get home at uh, dinner time tonight. Oh wow! And then I'll 
I'll change, you okay. know, but I'm, I'm dressed for the like this, for the day. Yeah. And every day we ought to get up and dress, you know, in God's love for love. They say that Jonathan Edwards would get up and the first thing he would do in the morning was spend about 20, 30 minutes just reflecting on heaven. Wow. Just reflecting on heaven so that he had the viewpoint of this is where I'm headed. Wow. So this is how I'm going to live today. Because that's where and, I'm which, which is what Paul is really saying here. You know, do this knowing that the time is already, uh, that it is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. Salvation is nearer to us than when we believe. So that he got up and every morning he thought nothing but about heaven, what heaven would be, what scripture says about heaven, so that he would dress himself in that thought for the rest of the day. I love that concept. I do too. So is that kind of where you are as you're preparing for this second coming message next week? You're trying yeah, to think, yeah. some, think some about mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. So talk us through that a little bit, like where, where you're going. You're going to move into this second kind of second coming motif next week, and then are you going to use Romans to take us into Christmas, or are you going to uh, go somewhere yeah, else? No, I probably will. I can't. I haven't gone oh, okay. uh, that far ahead because I've not really looked down into uh, chapter 14 where he begins to get into this whole thing of... Uh, that's the weaker brother. Passage. Yes, the That's weaker brother, moment. and what do we do? Which is that comes out of this thing of love. You yes. Know? Well, that's a great point. It's, an, it's another context. expression of how I show my love um, for my fellow man is I consider where they are spiritually. Yes. You know, I deal with them and understand them in that way. I don't get short. With, well, anyway, the all I can tell you is that 11 through 14 is all eschatological. It's all about the coming of Christ. And he's saying you better wake up and start living this way because the coming is a lot closer than you think. I, um, I, yeah, I, I can't wait to hear you explore some of that with us because I, as I've gone, as, especially these past couple of years, I've, I've realized how undereducated I am with eschatological things. Well, I'm trying to help that. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm, trying to, I'm trying so hard. <laughs> I uh, bought a Bible and everything, <laughs> Pastor. I, I fi you know, I'm finally there. Finally there. Uh, all right, and then you got, we got, I guess we should say, I, I don't know, what, is there anything else you had to leave out of yesterday before we talk about a couple other things? Uh, no, not that I can think of. I did have that illustration of the, of the shotgun, you know, the, bar the explosion in yeah. the barrel. That's how the love and the law operate together. I think that that, that is helpful, um, yeah, obviously, because we, we <laughs> I guess we covered that. If, if we decide, we're going to decide how the act of love operates, we have no idea what we're doing. We have all these different ideas, but God's, God's yeah, law yeah. pushes us in the right direction. To me, the biggest thing that spoke to me yesterday was uh, that I struggle in the flesh, I struggle with sin, just like everybody else. And Paul comes and he quotes this, which to me, I've always wondered, why, do, why does he turn off and go to the Ten Commandments? But the whole thing is, if I love my neighbor the way I should, I don't do these things because of my love for him. And in not doing those things, I am fulfilling the law. I'm keeping the law. I'm not breaking the law. So that really kind of spoke to me. Um, I love it when you can make it personal like that for us both here. And then even yesterday, and sometimes you give us a window into just your, your personal walk. And you talked about those times. And we all have them, mm -hmm. you know, maybe where you're laying in bed at night or before you're going to bed. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, cannot believe how sinful I am. Can't believe I'm thinking about this again. I can't believe I said that again. Yeah, yeah. And then the reminder, there's no condemnation. Yeah, yeah. We all, I mean, I, I, I love it when you, when you humanize things uh, for us. I think, you know, I, I, I have the privilege of getting to know you personally, but I think for so many of the congregation, you know, the whole people think, oh, well, you know, pastor never struggles with sin or he never, like, has this or that. Yeah, and see, I grew up in the home of a deacon, so I know what they think about the preacher. <laughs> Well, speaking of that, we had the church business meeting last night, which yeah. was, that was, you know, Pat. It was a great meeting. It really was. I mean, how many churches ever go through uh, an hour meeting like that, and there's not a single question? Everything is voted unanimously through. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, 
And it's not that we mind people asking questions. That's why we have the meeting. That's exactly The purpose right. of the meeting is if you have a legitimate question, yeah. you know, I'm just, you know, there are a lot of people who just want to make a dig at something. But if you have a legitimate question, ask, ask, ask the question. That's well, what we want you to do. We want you to express uh, what you're thinking. Well, I think one of the reasons we didn't have any questions last night is because the presentations were so complete. They were, yeah. weren't they? They I, were good. I sent Jeff and Dave an email just saying I was. I, I just feel proud to be a part of this church. Things yeah. are organized, you know. So anything that they, the presenters, they kept anticipating questions that people would ask, and they would cover it, you mm -hmm. know, even before their presentation was over. And um, <laughs> under pastor's leadership, we never have business meetings that last longer than an hour anyway. So oh he's very, very uh, forward with uh, yeah. with that policy. So it was a, a great, and you know, I, oh, gosh, we didn't even talk about it. I had the baptism yesterday. I got to baptize yeah, two more Yeah, you did. Of my that's kids. right. That was, uh, wow, that was just, that's just an unbelievable Now you've got feeling. one more to go. One more to go, and yeah. And whoever else now is going to come along behind this. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, we'll hope. Yeah, we don't practice infant baptism here at the church yet, so we're going to wait. We're going to wait yet. a while. <laughs> Love slipping that in there. Um, I, but but so who knows? Who knows what the future will hold? But yeah, we're we're very grateful and still pray. I, yeah. I was trying to preach to the kids how, in so many ways, baptism is simply the beginning, right? Yeah. yeah. Your public declaration of faith, um, yeah. and then you have your life ahead of you to live out that faith. And I love how everybody affirms that by coming up, you know, yeah, when they're baptized, the yeah. and how there's a deacon that goes through that yes. with each candidate, how there's an elder that comes Amen. back with each. And so the whole church is, in a sense, in a lot of ways, the whole church is involved when somebody here is baptized, which I just think is really, really neat. It, it, it is. It's a family. If it, well, even your grandson is running the, the camera that's yeah. right there and shows it with everybody that can't get close to the baptistry. That's, it's, really, it's really beautiful. It is. It is. Well, and we've got a big Christmas season coming up uh, oh, ahead of us. You, uh, you started to talk about our Christmas Eve schedule yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got those candlelight services right. on the 23rd and I, 24th. I, I was saying, you know, we've got, we've got a service on the 23rd because all I could do is I could hear Joe, don't call it the eve of Christmas Eve. In the back. Yeah. And so I was just thinking, well, I can't do that. I can't call it the eve of Christmas People Eve. People don't like when I say Christmas Adam either. You've heard that joke, mm -hmm. right? Well, you oh, Christmas, Christmas Adam. Cri yeah. Christmas Adam, Christmas Eve, but yeah. no, people aren't into that. <laughs> so, but I just think they're going to love it. I, oh, I'm going to think they're going to get there, and if they didn't bring somebody with them, they're going to say, why didn't I bring so-and-so with mm -hmm. me? Yeah. You know? It's going to be a beautiful service. we got the Lord's Table. i I got to ask you a couple questions about that later on, but we've got the... We've got that uh, your your homily is being presented dramatically, yeah. which is really with that's that's going to be really the centerpiece, and then we've got communion and. Uh, um, I've never light. had anybody <clears throat> use the word homily with what I do. Oh, really? You're the first time. Yeah, and I guess in a sense that would be a homily. Well, I yeah, it's well, different than a than a full throated sermon. I think I think my definition of homily is incomplete. I because for me it's always just like sort of a shorter message, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so you, this one's only going to be seventeen minutes, which you know. Um, that is enough to make you come right there. I know, pastor is to only going to preach for hey, seventeen. To see, minutes. and it's the reason why is because it's all written. <laughs> <laughs> I know. When you suggested it to me, I was like, pastor, are you sure? Yeah. Because yeah. this is only yeah, seventeen minutes. I can do that. We'll. Uh, We'll do it. So that's Christmas. It's not a sermon like what you're thinking either. No, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's very different. It's cool. Uh, I guess just a couple more uh, uh, Christmas season fun things. We've got um, we've got the, the the Christmas party, which um, the date for that is escaping me. Does it fall on the fifteenth this year, Joanna? Can you remember? Uh, either way, it's two Wednesdays from now, on, or maybe three the Wednesdays. The thirteenth. The thirteenth. So you can RSVP for that. It's even going to be bigger and better than it was last year. That's always a lot of fun. We pack out the worship center with tables and we all eat cookies and drink. We built, they do the little man uh, mangers yeah. for, we could build we've a always done, too, you know, the graham crackers and the gum drops and the thing. This year we're bringing in little pieces of steel, erector sets. I like for, that, erector so. set, maybe some Legos and connects. We're gonna do yeah. the, the real deal. So that, did you wanna talk about June Hunt one more time? Yeah, that's coming June, up this June is gonna be, a, if you're going to be here and you sign up to go to the lunch to hear her, you're going to really be, you're going to really find that a blessing. She's going to talk about, you know, relating to your children through boundaries 
And then she will uh, do a second part where she'll go into uh, the issues of depression and anxiety and stress, which this time of year, we all could use Oof, a good yeah, dose of that. That happens. Um, but even if we're not in that position right now, we know people that are. Yeah. So how do you deal with people? What, what, what would be the most effective way? You want to help somebody, you know, and that's kind of what we were talking about yesterday. You just, you love them, you extend your love. Somebody that's going through a time of depression this time of year, um, those kind of things, you, you, you want to minister to them. So you, you'll, it's, it'll be well worth your time to be there. Okay. And she is a wonderful lady. She's one of the dearest friends. Uh, you know, years ago, Debbie, Debbie suffered. I can remember one of the fir first times she had a migraine. We were in the car. And she literally got down in the floorboard. I was taking her to the hospital. Oh, wow. She got down in the floorboard and covered her head. She says, I can't stand the light. And uh, wow. she was really hurting. Well, that, that went on for a little period of time, and June found out that she was having these migraines. June made an appointment with a doctor in Houston. We were in Dallas. Uh, got her. They flew down to Dallas. She flew down there with her went in to see the doctor, and they came back, and of course, uh, it, that was really the time she started coming out of these. There were certain things that would trigger them. Yeah. Um, and, um, so, I, but, but that's just, you know, you can't find friends like that. That, is, that really is They're wonderful. Just, who loves, like Paul said, right. just extends that kind of love and says, come on, I'm going to go get you some help. I think I've got a guy down here that can help you. Well, she's coming next week. She's going to give the whole church some help. Yep, she so will. We'll she see really you guys will. there next Sunday afternoon. And hey, we'll be back here. We're, we're just here, you know, if you want to come by. Just hanging out. Um, you know, our doors will be locked, but Jeff would love to see you guys. Yeah, that's um, right. So just, just come on by. Hey, <laughs> it's been fun. We'll see you later. Say goodbye, Pastor. Goodbye, Pastor.